Church and those who are viewing with us, I would like to welcome you to yet another Sabbath at the Kako Seventh-day Adventist Church. Your week might not have been what you pray that you shared a link with your family. Loving Father, we just want to thank you for the privilege of being here this morning. Without you, Heavenly Father, nothing would be possible. I pray that the word which will be taught here will reach our hearts. Thank you for your grace. We'll go right into our Sabbath school, which will be done by El Patrick. Now our life throughout the past six days of toil and labor, whereby we can be here this bright Sabbath morning. I want to welcome us to service this morning. Those who are viewing us online, welcome to service. Call a family, call a friend, share the link, and we'll have a joy. Bless of all the weak, the bright in us life, the welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blem. Set up of death, set up of death, worship him today, a living way.
number 528.5 to 8, a shelter in the time of storm. Yeah. 
No 
O Lord, my God, Creator God, when I in awesome wonder, I consider all the works thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe surely is displayed. Then sings my soul, how great thou art, how great thou art. Happy Sabbath, everyone, and a warm, friendly welcome to everyone who has come to church this morning, whether you are in the audience or you are watching us online. Welcome. May God bless you. I am delighted that you have come to Sabbath School this morning, and we are here this morning to reflect on the theme, Footprints of God. Footprints of God. It's my desire, brothers and sisters, that by the end of the Sabbath School program this morning, we all will be able to say with renewed zeal, Creator God, if nature obeys you, so will I. Now I'm sure by now you've noticed that I'm holding an umbrella, right? So I ask you the question, what do we use an umbrella for? To shelter from the rain and sun, but most times you shelter the rain with an umbrella, correct? Yeah, man. So, have you ever stopped to consider the rain? Who's having shy there? Moon by catch it of lapli because you high lapli and shy moon because you got quite lapli can pay you present for you. But have you really thought about the rain? Well, let me tell you a few things about the rain, brothers and sisters. Consider for a moment. One quarter of the earth's surface is dry. Did you know that? And three quarters is water. That's right. Now. Think for a moment. If that ratio were to be different, what would have happened? So, if the ocean was half its size, we'd only receive one quarter the amount of rainfall that we do now. And you know what the result would be? Most the land now, half of the land currently was added to the ocean. We'd receive four times more rainfall as we do now. The world would be a perpetual swamp and life would be almost impossible. You see that? So God made it perfect. The perfect ratio. And God made the sprinkler system which we call rain. Okay? Now tell me something. If man had to develop a sprinkler system for the earth, would they be able to do that? You can say, well, they probably would have used the water from the ocean. Well, maybe so. But we have three problems that we would have to overcome. Let me tell you what the three problems would be. How would they transport the water from the ocean to water the whole earth? Hmm? What about the salt content in the seawater? How would they deal with that? And thirdly, what about the weight of the water? So these are three questions we'll explore somewhere down the line. The next time, brothers and sisters, you see a raindrop, look up and say, my God, how great thou art. At this time, brothers and sisters, we shall be favored with a very special song by Ella Moore. Good morning. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars 
Pesanan di Evan Jufri Kawan Mas Halabin and patient he must be He's still working on me There really ought to be A sign upon my heart Don't judge it yet There's an unfinished part But I'll be perfect Just according to his plan Fashioned by the master's loving hand He's still working on me To make me where I ought to be He's taking just a week to make the moon and the stars The sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars Impatient he must be that I see makes me wonder why he never gave up on me he loves me as I am and helps me when I pray remember he's the father of the clay he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be it took him just a week to make the Thank you very much, LLG. That was a wonderful song. He's still working on me. The Creator God created the earth in six days, rested on the seventh. And he's still working on us this morning. Our scripture reading is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 8, verses 1, 3, and 4. Psalms, chapter 8, verses 1, 3, and 4. I shall read the, the first verse. You shall read the third, and I will read the fourth. Psalm chapter 8, verses 1, 3, and 4. Verse 1 goes like this. To the chief musician upon Gritis, a psalm of David, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set the glory above the heavens. Verse 3, the congregation reads. Verse 4, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visiteth him? Let's bow our heads as we approach the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we are thankful this morning for life and health and strength. We are thankful this morning, Lord, for bringing us to your house of worship to thank you and praise you for your mighty works toward the children of men. And even as we come into your presence at this time, Lord, we ask for forgiveness for our sins and we invite the Holy Spirit to be with us, to reflect on your love and your goodness and the works of your creation. And may we appreciate you more than we ever did before. May we have a blessed time in your name, dear Lord, this morning, I pray, for Christ's sake. Abraham Lincoln once said, I never beheld the heavens filled with stars that I did not feel I am looking into the face of God. I can see how it might be possible for a man to look down on the earth and be an atheist, but I cannot conceive how he could look up into the heavens and say there is no God. They are wab. Take a sit in a tent on you, bon matin. You look at parler about different by you know, like you can't you you can't say parler about religion. Like you don't mention that well. Qui mange au père sauve la nuit bon Dieu. A grand homme qui in charge of tout by. How do you know that? 
Et non, là, il m'a des questions à ce là pour un petit moment et qui capture les derniers répondre comme ça. How do I know whether it was a man or a camel that went by my tent last night while I slept? Well, the questioner replied, the marks, well, you know by the footprints, the marks in the sun will not be mistaken. Even though the Arab had been asleep in his tent, he knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that a camel had passed by his tent in the night. So, said the humble man of the desert, this is how I know there is a God. I know him by his footprints. And so, brothers and sisters, the theme for our Sabbath school this morning is footprints of God. And we're looking at his creation and how his footprints are seen everywhere. God's footprints are all about us. Amen, brothers and sisters? Look where you will, and you will see unanswerable evidence of his existence, his power, his love, his majesty, and his care for his children. One of the millions, sorry, of the millions of human beings upon the face of the earth, no two are exactly alike. Did you know that? Now you might tell me I'm wrong. Because twins exactly, they are twins who look alike. Is that really the case? Trust me. They may look alike, but if you look closely, you will see something that is different about one or the other. There is no duplication in nature. No two leaves are alike. No two blades of grass are the same. That might be variety that God gave us. And even in fruits and vegetables, he gave us different fruits, different colors, different tastes, different shapes. Do you agree? Yes. On land and on sea and everywhere we look, the fingerprints of God's omnipotent hand are seen. Study one drop of water under a microscope and you'll find it teeming with millions and minutest of living things. With a powerful mic uh, telescope, look up into the heavens and you will find countless heavenly bodies all moving about in a definite path and on time to the fraction of the second. Look around you and you will see the springs and the rivers flowing day in and day out, night by night. The tiny snowflakes speaks of God's love, God's love for the beautiful. The mighty mountains or us with a sense of our own in insignificance in comparison with the power that made them. He performs miracles before our very eyes, day in and day out. The functioning of our bodies is beyond our understanding. The reproduction of life in both plants and animals must be recognized as the power of only a God like the God we serve. Amen? Let's look at a few things that you probably did not know, or maybe you did. Are you aware that you are about one centimeter taller when you wake up in the morning? Let me tell you why. Because during the day, the soft tissue, cartilage, between your joints, your knee and other parts, they get squashed and compressed because you can't do it. But now I don't mean, it's a cafe, but you relax. So you can't do it. Organized coy. So you can't do it one centimeter. Yeah. Right, so you can't do it. If you walked for 12 hours a day, it would take you the average, it would take the average person 690 days to walk around the world. The only muscle that never gets tired in the human body is which one? Yes. No, it is. It is. Which muscle in the body never gets tired? Anybody knows? Amen. Your heart is the only muscle in your body that never gets tired. The entire surface of your skin is replaced every month. Which means 
over your lifetime, you would have changed your skin 1,000 times. The body has 2.5 million sweat pores. Every minute, you shed over 30,000 dead skin cells. The tongue is covered with about 8,000 taste buds. Each taste bud contains up to 100 cells, helping you taste your food. You produce 40,000 liters of spit in your lifetime. Or, to put it another way, you produce around 500 bathtubs of spit over your lifetime. You didn't know that, did you? Who can stand on the seashore, brothers and sisters, with the waves lapping at his feet without feeling that a great God rules the universe? Who can ride the white-capped waves of the mighty ocean without being awed with the same thoughts? Imagine being on the sea. Right? Who but God could paint the sky with the soft and beautifully blended colors of a glorious sunset? The lightning, the thunder, the fury or, or the fury, sorry, of the storm speaks to us of him. In the clay of the world, we find millions of footprints which tell us of a great living God, the father of all. The animal and the vegetable kingdom tells us of his overruling power. So, do you still question his power? Do you still want more evidence that God is the God who is supreme? His footprints are on every side. An unmistakable and an unanswer unanswerable evidence of his omnipotent, omniscient, loving Heavenly Father who is interested in us and in every part of his creation. Some people believe that God made the earth and left it on its own to take care of itself. But that's not true. God is here every single second of the day. You breathe without even knowing that you're breathing. Your heart beats. You don't even know that it's beating. But it beats anyway, doesn't it? Why? How? Because there's a God who is powerful and is watching over his children. Amen. At this time, we'll take a break and we'll listen and watch a video on the screen. Christians in the 21st century think too little about God's creation. Consequently, we think too little about God. We're so enamored with ourselves, our schedules, work, technology, and extracurricular activities, and much more, that we often fail to see the stars and smell the roses. Today, perhaps more than any time in history, man misses the apparently simple things in life that should cause us to meditate continually upon the greatness of the Creator. Of course, nothing is more important for Christians to meditate on than God's Word, but in conjunction with God's special revelation, His Word, we ought to ponder about how God's amazing natural revelation, His creation, testifies to God's infinite power, intelligence, and care. Time and again, Holy Writ points to God's creation as proof of His greatness. Since the time of Job, Noah, and going as far back as Adam, man has learned some wonderful things about God by considering His amazing creation. The Apostle Paul wrote that since the creation of the world, His, God's, invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead. Perhaps no other book of the Bible leads man to deeper meditation on God's greatness than the book of Psalms. Yet interestingly, oftentimes this same inspired book turns man's attention to God's creation. In Psalm 8, for example, David praised the excellent name of the Lord who set His glory above the heavens, who made the moon, stars, man, and even the beast of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. What did David conclude? O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. In Psalm 19, we are reminded that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows His handiwork. 
In Psalm 33, we learn of one of the reasons that humanity is to fear and stand in awe of the Lord. Because by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of His mouth. For He spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Consider the climax of the book of Job, when God spoke to the patriarch out of a whirlwind. Instead of informing Job of the exact reasons for his suffering, God spoke to him about his creation. And beginning in Job chapter 38, verse 39, and going through chapters 39, 40, and 41, God spoke to Job about several different animals, including the lion, the hawk, behemoth, and Leviathan. Of all of the things God could have said to Job, he spent 77 verses talking about some of his animal creation. He chose to teach Job about his all-powerful, all-knowing, supreme nature by describing some of the magnificent animals that he had created. The prophet Isaiah once wrote about being allowed to see a vision of the throne of God. In the Lord's presence were angelic beings crying out to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. What is the basis of this praise? What is one reason we should be driven to worship God? Isaiah revealed one of the pillars of God's praise in the very next line. The whole earth is full of His glory. Indeed, the beauty, splendor, and design of God's creation should drive us closer to the Creator. His fingerprints should make us stand in awe of Him. They should drive us to our knees in worship of Him, and they should compel us to tell others about Him. As the psalmist sang, we should declare His glory among the nations, His wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. What a magnificent God He is. A scientist and a preacher were one night <clears throat> seated side by side on a flight. They were about two miles up in the air they were flying at about 500 miles per hour. And below them, they could see the lights of the city as they passed over. Above them, in the darkness, was the canopy of heaven, which were filled with twinkling stars. The scientists talked about the immensity of the universe and of the movements of heavenly bodies, and he tried to explain how the world evolved over countless millions of years and how life on the planet began with one speck of protoplasm and finally it evolved, it evolved and he became a man. In his thinking and reasoning, he had no place for God, for God the creator. And after he had talked and talked and talked, using all his scientific vocabulary. He turned to his friend and sit mate and asked him, well, what do you think about what I've just said? You know how these learned men act? You know, they think they're superior, of course, because you can't tell my by. At least you can't, you can't. So it's never known like it, well, so I Expecting the man to, you know, praise him for his scientific vocabulary and his knowledge. The Tansan minister way pony. Well, the minister began. In my basement at home, I have an automatic washer. And it never ceases to amaze me how at the right time, the machine takes up the right amount of water at the right time, he takes the suds, um, detergent, whatever, whatever. And he can make a separate tub for his every plate. At the right time, it rinses the clothes. At the right time, it dries it. And at the right time, it shuts off. The scientist was following him so far. And then the preacher went on. So which do you assume is more reasonable? That lots of bolts and plastic and metal was just swirling around in the universe and by accident, 
They just came together and formed a washing machine, well set up to do all these tasks one at a time? Or do you believe that there was a mastermind who sat down and he put a plan together to make a washing machine? Well, as the story goes, there was silence for a while. And then finally, the scientist spoke up. By the way, he says, I've been thinking about this God of yours. Brothers and sisters, this morning, we've been reflecting on the creative power of God. Now, earlier on, I asked you the questions about rain. How would they transform seawater and allow it to water the entire earth had God not created the rain? So let's, let's inspect that for a while. Okay. So the only or the biggest body of water that we have is the ocean. So had there been no rain, then now would be the best option to use to try to get the earth watered. Okay. So, man would not have been able to transport all that water around the world. So, let's see how God did it. God got around the transportation problem by using heat, the sun's heat, to turn water into a vapor. And did you know that water vapor is three times, 300 times, sorry, 900 times lighter than water? Yes. And this vapor will be lifted up into the sky and it forms what? Clouds. The second problem, which is the salt in the water. Let's see how God solved that problem. God evaporates the water and leaves all the minerals and impurities behind. And thirdly, what about the distribution of, of the, the water? Let's see how God picks that. Because water vapors or clouds are still hanging over us and over the ocean, the ocean is already water. They don't need more water. So what does God do? God makes the wind to blow the clouds all around on the land exactly where it's needed and now it falls back as what? Rain. You think man could have ever done that? Never. Never. Even if they were able to make televisions and cameras that people around the world can see me right now, they would not have been able to create such a sprinkler system. Brothers and sisters, it's important to know that God as a creator is magnificent. It gives us a sense of humility and safety to know that such a God is our God. We can gladly worship him today on a Sabbath day because we can acknowledge him that he is the creator. He made the earth in six days and he rested on the seventh. If the wind can obey the creator, so should we. Amen? Yes, so should we. Sansi Ehrman King wrote a poem called Father How Majestic. Father How Majestic, she says, all that thou creates, shores and towering mountains, seas and shimmering lakes. Thou hast made the mountains, the stars and moon above. But what is most important is the depth of thy great love. This morning, brothers and sisters, this is just a tip of the iceberg. God is magnificent. All the things that he made. And we don't have to go very far to see his handiwork because it's all around us. We need to praise and thank and, pray and, and magnify his name because he's worthy. We thank God this morning for his creative power. Only a God of love and power could have made such marvels as we see around us. If he cares for the tiniest of fishes and to give this earth rainfall, he cares for us too and he wants to save us. The Bible reminds us in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 26. It says, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. Yet our heavenly Father feeds them. How much more value do we have than these birds? 
This is the love that God has for his creation. This is the love that God has for us. So I thank you this morning, brothers and sisters, for being here, for listening, for taking part. And interestingly enough, this program was put together two weeks ago, not realizing that uh, this, lessons, this quarter's lessons will be talking about creation. And so when I'm done here, we shall still be talking about God's awesome creative power through the lesson study. May God bless you as you continue to worship him in the beauty of holiness. God bless you. Amen, amen, and amen. We just want to thank Brother Patrick Moore for our Sabbath school this morning. And if you're just tuning in with us, I want to welcome you. Um, at this point, we'll go into our lesson study, which will be done by Brother Joshua Harris. Morning, brothers and sisters, and our view in the audience. It's it's a wonderful thing to be in the house of God, fellowship, and to worship. So as we go into our lesson study, and as uh, Elder Patrick said, indeed that the lesson is just a continuation of the Sabbath school this morning, and we have learned a lot. I mean, from the Sabbath school this morning about creation. And we'll just continue uh, as we review the lesson study. So we shall pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just want to thank you once more for the opportunity where we could gather as your people uh, to worship, to fellowship, to study your word. And as we do so, may your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, elevate our thoughts. Lead us in all truth, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And again, we begin second quarter. And uh, our quarterly is entitled Genesis. We'll be looking at the book, the book of beginnings, Genesis. And this week, our study is about creation. And our memory text is taken from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And it reads, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yes, and my question to you this morning, again, and as Seventh-day Adventists, we know that that's one of our fun, fun, fundamental beliefs, creation. We believe in creation. And can anybody tell me the number on, on our 28th fundamental belief where we can find uh, that doctrine, just to tease your brain. <laughs> yes, don't worry, is number six. So again, you can go and study even further more on the, our, in the fundamental belief about uh, creation. It will just, it's a quick review again from the study and on the sabbath it reads that the book of genesis and hence the whole bible begins with god's act of creation this fact is very important because it means that our creation marks the beginning of human and biblical history this truth is also implies that the Genesis creation story has the same historical veracity as other events of human and biblical history. So for important that no 
or Bibla, Kuma say at story creation. At as Brother Patrick rightfully did that Sakai elim eliminate a shy a core cause of um, doubts. Cause of that Lani evolution. So against creation. So as Christian, that's very important for us to know our roots or our history. So for it says, super connect is true. Super connect co sorti. Koyodi upai sa ko ko kaale. Or direction ko ko te ukaale. Then let's say wrong ko te. So it's very important for no connect ki ko te no sorti. And and we'll just and we'll look at it in the study. And as we go on the Sunday lesson, the God of creation. The God of creation. Now Psalms it says to read Psalms one oh three. Psalms one hundred verses one to three. It's a popular psalm that they learn not to it. Psalm 100. 1, 2, 3. Say it. And recite it. Oh. Yes. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all he lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with fear, with singing. Pukia. Know he that the Lord, he is God. Yes, it is he that have made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Nous supposons dire Amen. Pour être ça. Bon matin, that some like I did not fear, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Because of who? We know that we were made in his image. Nous pas sorti from pièce lineage, macaque. Now, again, and that's what the lesson is trying to tell us. That no, they wonderfully and fearfully made. So, and we'll go into it. Look, I got a plea. And can you tell me now, Genesis, now, Lani Kome not live a Bible, Usav, Kikuma said creation, a creation story also. I see Ukone Pierce. Yes, man. Yeah, there's other books in the Bible who start with creation. At least a buy about creation. Yes, John. First lot, man. Yes. So now just read a buy. Now, it is significant that the Bible begins with creation. In fact, many biblical books begin with the evocation of creation. So I mean, a, a strong image or memory of creation. The book of Chronicles begins with creation in order to testify that we all belong to the same human race coming from the same father. So Loyal Chronicles gave our whole genealogy from Adam. The son. Isaiah begins with Genesis 1-1, which is the first line in the creation account. To remind us that God is our provider and that we should listen to him. Daniel, first testimony to the Gentile chief of the eunuch is a quotation of the creation account. Daniel's word testify to the eunuch that God is the creator who gives them food. Solomon introduced his, 
Solomon introduced his reflection with the meditation on creation, in which he laments that vanity of life, realizing that there is nothing new under the sun. And the Gospel of John opens with a poem on creation to emphasize the wonder of the incarnation that Jesus Christ, who was God in the beginning, created the world and then became flesh in order to save the world. So for it's a well any misy live a Bibla ki recite story of creation avant you commence. Pour qui a ou quoi ça important? Pour qui a ou quoi ça important? Pour nous, encore ça. Yes. Il est important pour être comme des pour savoir qu'on sortit. So we continues. So come on, that as as rightly said, you said John, even Hebrews also that we studied last quarter, Hebrews chapter one verse ten, even come say parle about creation. So it's very important. Now the lesson. Now the writer of the lesson, what say, so God the way that he say a professor of Hebrew. Now let us share it. Um, La ki from Hebrew. Now they le mwen pa isa pronoun se wodla. But you can have our idea. Se root wodla or ko se wodla sorti. So will the God of creation. Now the first verse in the Bible it is split other day. And and I'll just read from the from the lesson second paragraph it is, the book of genesis begins in fact with two different presentation of god the first creation account present presents god as infinitely far from humans the transcendent god elohim whose name speaks of the supreme pr supremacy of God, the name Elo Elohim denotes permanence and strength, and the use of the plural form of the word Elohim expresses the idea of majesty and transcendence. So it's very important that also that when the word God was mentioned in the act of creation that he lapad in pierce lot body liki supreme lapad in pierce lot moon kite la or ki point pa se liki kouban se tout bagay and we can see that in Isaiah chapter 44 verse 24 that it is thus Save the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. So, Bodetika Muche Supreme Mercy, that Pierce Lord Moon, Pierce Lord Moon, Die. C'est le yon qui fait act of, of creation. So, quand il body take a me respect à l'énoy. So, he alone. And the second part denotes that, I mean, body it is a personal, which is a, quand on pronounce Yahweh. 
So là, où est Lyon Saïd, dat bon Dieu, mouche dat is supreme, dat pièce nom, c'est Lyon qui fait cré création. Mais dans la seconde part là, il mouche de manière intimate. Dat même si il supreme, dat is a bon Dieu qui est personnel, is a bon Dieu qui est venu en relation. Et pour ça, non, c'est Yahweh. But it is the second creation account present that God as up close and personal, the Im imminent God, whose name many believe denotes closeness and relationship. The creation text as a whole is then an implicit appeal to worship God. First, to be aware of God's infinite grandeur and power, and at the same time, to acknowledge our dependence on him, because he created us, and not we ourselves. So for we have two characters. This creation story can relate to us. Two characters about God. First, he is all-powerful, most powerful, Et second, that Eve l'a n'y a relation avec nous. Or, il s'y a bon Dieu qui n'y a relation. And you can find that in Psalms 149. Quand nous avons school, nous avons Psalms qui parlent about greatness, or creation, le bon Dieu, nous avons school. Et Psalms 149, c'est un popular aussi, that Nous connaissons from verse 13, and we'll just read four verses. And it says that Psalms 149, verse 13, For thou hast possessed my runes, thou hast covered me in my mother's wound. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And as we know, in the image of God, which Nukai Gade. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth them aright. And verse 17, how precious also are thy thoughts unto me. O God, how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sun. When I awake, I am still with thee. So David, take express. Ma manye l'amitié bon Dieu pour lui. Et il dit pas même ça number. Oh il passe à venir cacher I mean manière bon Dieu me. Et faut dire and that's the God that we serve this morning. That's our Creator. That's the Creator of the heavens and earth. In any holiday, He's a personal bon Dieu. If you have any comment, free to share. And we go to Monday, Monday's lesson, the creation. The creation. And give, give us a couple of verses to read. But again, yes, Ella Ramon. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Yes, mommy. And avant aller Monday's lesson, um, Pastor Jerry, you made some very important points concerning the first part of the lesson. But um, the lesson states clearly that God is a God who is so great and mighty. He is not at the same level with any human being. Yes. You know, and yet he is up close and personal. Um, but the word says that God is, he is unapproachable. Mm. He dwells in light unapproachable and his very presence is a consuming fire. So in what way is he so up close? How is he so close and personal 
um, with us. Okay. How Any does he come so anybody close to us? Anybody yeah, care to share, to answer for the elder Ask. Timon here, bon dieu, as for Bible did that, c'est pas n'importe nom, ça n'ont pas approach, because it's a consuming fire, but yet, so Timon here, nous qui, Timon here, nous qui regarde ça. Yes, well, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll try. Yes, God is, uh, again, like he said, I mean, with our body, the, at the core, we, it's a consuming fire. But at the same time, I just can't move money holy, I mean, money, character body, money holy. At the end, keep a holy, pass a, Called the approach of in a, a poisons. Bon Dieu. But still yet, a core idea ima if I know immediately. So that personal um, relationship, like, like you were saying, that see if I know uh, immediately, see young man here that he, he may have personal for no. I mean, if I know immediately. A core, let no VLA. Mais nous allons au New Testament, là, nous voyons Jésus-Christ. Là, Jésus-Christ, même fait plus possible, là, pour nous, ça aller, pour nous, ça approach. I mean, throne, pour nous study, boldly. So, dès le, right now, nous passons, nous, dès le, nous, nous passons à leur présence mondiale, comme Paul dit, nous, nous passons à corrupt, nous passons à être uncorruptible. But yet, through Jesus Christ, that he has faith that nous a, nous a a personal relationship at a bon dieu. Yes. Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah, Josh. Um, yeah, I agree. And the lesson yes. makes an important point there too. That because of who he is, because of Kim Moon Bon Dieu, he deserves our worship. Yes. Now let's and just casually, we are here worshiping. Bon Dieu la présence élève, no? Now, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Okay. Yeah. Because if you know that no presence of God can worship, then you know the Sabbath. Yeah. The God says, Israel, Israel, like, build me a sanctuary that I may dwell with you. So, you see, we, God is almighty, but yet, He still will dwell. So, there is. What do you mean by that? So, in spite of. Qui est mon bon Dieu? Ah. Bon Dieu n'est tellement l'amitié qui aime nous tellement that he is willing to, as it were, make himself small, confined to space and time, just for a minute to worship us and of no side. Yes. And so this should tell us that um, he is up close and personal. Yes. And we have to recognize this this morning. Like also, need someone to know that. Um, this um point sa ni pou um di nou et ben fè nou sa because bon dieu tellement bon et qu'il est tellement l'amitié and he is so up close and personal lesson states that um it gives us or it tells us how we should approach him yes um and so let nou vini in the presence of god and we believe that he is uh, how we should approach him yes. in the sanctuary how with awe and reverence. 
So you know when Cognizé came on bon Dieu, and the fact that he is so up close is and with a reverence. Yes. So no bow, even if we don't see him, yeah, we cannot yeah. speak any language we want in the sanctuary. It has to be worship. Worship, we come into his very presence. And not we ourselves, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter Amen. into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Yes. Yes. Well said. You have it on point. Yes, brothers and sisters. And that's the God. And and that's why we can make a joyful noise, brothers and sisters, when we come into the house of God. For it says, Nous ne sommes pas en paix. Oui, merci, bon Dieu. Mais nous venons pour chanter. Chanter, pas en paix. Merci, bon Dieu. Because, bon Dieu, like Gina is right, rightly saying, that he deserves it. Bon Dieu deserves it. Nous ne sommes pas just venus here, just bouche nous ferme et wed. Non, ça ne va pas right. No need. Say your expression. Expression for praise say no need bush. So no need to praise. Bon Dieu bless no at a bush. So no need to praise baby. And, and as the elder was rightly saying that let no find a sanctuary. But even brothers and sisters, let no keep the sanctuary. Change that Sabbath plus a young jour. But no can still continue to vive six jours out, out of Sabbath. La. So even six jours no can vive la. That no supposed to continue to praise, but worship Monday. So we go on the Monday, Monday's lesson. It is the creation. Creation. And as you know, on before all every day, at the end of every day, Monday at Classy Classy La Terre. Yes, God, yes. Say a general, I mean, that's a, the, that's a general name, but kill us. A God headler. Yes, the Bible clearly said it. It is Jesus who created. So, after chaque jour, Jesus said, it is good. It's not true. After chaque jour, tout ça is created. It is good. It's good. Je satisfait. Et ça, fait. Est-ce que ça dit ça? Un bout de toute journée, est-ce que ça dit ça? Les jours au bout. Est-ce que ça dit ça? Oh, just reflect. Est-ce que ça fait journée à tes bon? Est-ce que ça dit ça, moi, fait journée à tes bon? Ouais, et tout ça, quoi, c'est qu'à. Let no reflect. Uh, creation. Let me say that. Let no reflect. On the power of God. Reflect on the creation. Tout ça qui a venu l'idée de nous. Oui, bon Dieu a créé ça. Il dit que c'est bon. Mais je vais finir. Qui a fait que c'est bon? So, c'est juste uh, pour reflect. Allez? Okay. Yes. Oh, le bon. Oui, well, you, oui, on a oui, dit, bonne question. Oui, ok, c'est une bonne question. Brother Donald m'a dit, yes, m'a dit c'est Jésus qui est qui est, but where was the Father and the Holy Spirit? Personne voulait chier. Yes. They were very present at that time, you know. Because where the Father goes, so does the Son and the Holy Spirit. Where the Son goes, so does the Father and the Holy Spirit. They're forever together. So they were very present at that time whilst Jesus was created. Yes. Sa, sa satisfo? No. No class, no class. Yes. Let us make man in our own image. Let us. So if it says us, it means there were, not, there were more than one person present. All right? So, yeah. Let
Yes. So, yes, Brother Donald. Moko pon sa ako adia. Oui. But if I really, if I really need pes con confusion, if I need pes confusion adeng. In the beginning, <laughs> so tell us about that in the beginning. So it's not about the PMA order, the PMA peace, the PMA make sure all the be um, took by all the dues. So he bet he make sure he bet a sladi who make sure lock being a question, sir. Weapon slala, yes. Um, also to add on what Sister Gina says, remember it says in the beginning, God created, all right, God created the heavens and the earth now. Yes, before Elder Ramon, they let Elder Ramon take a open right by la. But let no other lesson. A call, come, come, ready that a call, lesson, a Hebrew, a word la, mafsi elder take a emphasis a lesser. That word God la, pa singular. A plural. So, say pa young moon. Mem say utan God, say English la. But lo ale original la, la, language la. It's a plural. God la la pa just young moon, but please, please pay on. Elder Ramon. Well, you make the point, um, <coughs> that, um, the meeting said, back to the name Moses, in the beginning, God. Then no the God, there is one God. Yes. But there are three different distinct personalities. Yes. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So at creation, they were all present. No baha, no baha sepa we. There are not three gods. There is one God. Um, although the evangelist, uh, John 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made, speaking of Jesus. So um, it is as it were. Um, you're too late to add the poison. Yes. So all things were made by him and through him. I think that's why he made a point that Jesus was the one who created. Like even somewhere in Hebrews, he be member. Okay? Yes. Um, but, no perhaps it power you. You're too late to add the poison. Because there is one God. Okay? The OD, you see, it, it's plural. Plural in the sense that there are three distinct personalities, but you part of us a lot. And they all work together to accomplish the same purpose. Tet -a -tet. I, yeah, exactly. All right, so, so Yon Pafe, uh, God the Father doesn't do one thing, and the Son does something else, and the Spirit does something else. Even in redemption, all three of them, you truly do a catch up by some for the redemption and the salvation of the human race. Yes. So, ko yon ye Um, yes. Maybe unlike us, they le ko ye josh madam of Allah. Oh, what's up? Catch up by you. Ah, with Allah. Oh, what's up? Oi. But not so with God. Oi. Yeah. Yes, well done. Yeah, it is clear for it, sir. Yes, Sister Juju. I also wanted to point out, he said also to the um, disciples that um, if you have met the Father, you have met me. So when he said that, um, um, it, came to, um, it comes to our mind that wherever God is or Jesus is, God is there also. And if you have met Jesus, you meet God also. Amen. Yes, very well. Yes, Sister Paul. Now, sometimes we think that we have studied the, the creation story. Sometimes we think that we have studied the creation story. Why is it that the lesson keeps bringing out Genesis and creation? But we have to understand around, the, around creation is a lot of controversies is that a lot of people are now pushing forward the theory that, that came at, at, at birth, at uh, beginning. That's why it has been clarified that some misunderstanding and, and, and fallacies going on. 
Yes, and those who are viewing, I mean, Mr. Novely, no copa. And even in the illustration that Elder Patrick also gave in his Sabbath school about about creation, Lani Abodi, he created. And John clearly say, John Hebrew, he say, Jesus Queen. Le papa a dit fait, il fait. Le sab, about Sabbath là. So the lesson touched. Bon Dieu, qui était. Qui a bon Dieu pas qui était Eve et Adam? À le premier jour, il était qui était au jour avant Sabbath là. Yes. Mission. God wanted to give man a purpose. You are just created by people your purpose. You have to give it a purpose then. and to work, you know? Very well. Good point also. By about Sabbath law also. Even at he misunderstood, did Adam and Eve kept, keep the first, kept the first Sabbath? Now see a lot go so Argument also, even a church la. Ki, and see Adam and Eve, te che be pumye sabaf la. We, we, as the answer, yes. Yes, Lord Moon. I know we have some bright students <laughs> in the house. So, okay. But, anyways. Time now I have in short. So, yeah, just a Bible reflect or who, who study. Ole. So, again, the Sabbath. Oh, yes. Um, during that creation week, they realized the creation of the heavens and the earth, everything, right? Um, and then God instituted. Sabbath law, right? Oui. With God. So therefore, they kept the Sabbath as well. Yes. Because they're working far with God. So, when la, la ni debat instituted la, mariage et puis Sabbath law. Est-ce qu'on a dit moi, si un moun par, believe in Sabbath law et mari, I mean, a chai moun believe in mariage, mais pas believe in Sabbath law, totally. Ou ka yon a chai moun pas believe in didang. Est-ce que vous dit que si vous creation, vous supposé observer ça avec le mariage Oui. Si vous avez dit que vous avez dit observer ça avec le mariage Parce que bon Dieu institué ça during the, the week of creation. Oui. Ah, oui, c'est là. Là, 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 so, or also Sabbath law, it's in the pot you for you. So, but point now, what are many of it for it? Not again, unlike Brother Nichols rightly said that body, tivly by now. Now, law read now, if you read the Bible, why that say body curious? That why were Adam at if arrest? And it is that God rested from his work. Adam and Eve if he stay. Now that's a now sir say a go conflict that at no sir. Yes. Came in for cut you off. You saw what should be. Ah, if you can lay, if you can find a bon point la. Um. Let me guard you. One minute. Let me guard you. Si moi j'ai pour moi why did God rest? Parce que bon Dieu était lax. No. Why did he rest? Can somebody give me a quick answer? Oh, okay. All right, because he rested. That's a good point. But bon Dieu rested. Yes. And as we studied, his creation was perfect to be doing. It was very good. That's right. Everything was it where I can rest because my creation is perfect. I am the one. So we have to recognize that it is God who has created. 
Non. Mais bon Dieu fait Almec qui va bailler. Bon Dieu pas Dieu fait Diti Mamaï. Non. Man, and something else. They were, bon Dieu fait au grand moon right away. Yeah, right away. And so the point is, he rested on the seven from all his work. So it seems to me that our life, la vie moi, and la vie, the, the life of the human race began by resting. Yes, sir. Is that? Huh? Oui, resting but it, yes, in Jesus. Say. Yeah. Resting with God and in God. Amen. Because of who God is. Bon Dieu really bon ça. So la, oui. la, la vie nous commence à la rest. Sabbath rest. Amen, the Sabbath is so deep and so profound. Nous même pas même fin qu'on prend Sabbath là. Et sometimes, de l'en nous quand venir ici, nous quand nous quand worship bon Dieu. Et si nous quand vraiment commence à worship bon Dieu in recognition of who he is, we need to think of that. So love began by resting. And the The Sabbath is a sign of God's creative power and is also a sign of his redemptive, redemptive power. Yes. Mais bon Dieu, he has accomplished the redemption of humanity. He rested on the Sabbath in yes. the tomb. So life began by resting and life will end by resting in perfect harmony with Jesus and God who is the creator. And that is why the Sabbath is a sign of his redemptive power. Someday soon, all those evils and all those pain and sufferings will be wiped away. And what shall we be doing? Resting with Jesus throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Yes, amen. And that's the whole meaning of the Sabbath, you know. Yes. Uh, it is not just a law to be kept. But it is the purpose and the intention of God in creating and giving us the Sabbath. Amen. Yes. Yes, Brother Donald. The last. Yes. Yes. So that's says how they are near a bon point. And she rest last say for Este Omo Domi. Le bon die of in a legally said Domi. Or le bon die take with Adam et Eve, or le Sabbath la. Kia yore ka fe. And she Domi yore ka Domi. No, a precious bon die yote. Ka fe kia? Worship. Ka adore, ka ve. Nous avons à ça bon Dieu a fait. Donc, je veux dire, c'est le whole purpose de la Sabbath. Et as we end la création de l'homme, c'est comme je dit, nous faisons une image de bon Dieu. Nous pas sorti une pièce de Riss Macac. Donc, nous avons fait une image de la liberté de Dieu. Et nous savons que nous avons répondu. Que nous That a gaba nou vale, vale. Et, et fwete sou sa ou dat. Le bon die kwete nom. E di, ou sa ou bon die. Ou kwa di bon die te vle fe. Kwa, kwa e di. Like Nestle. Sa min, uh, et, et lesi nan di. Dat image la. Se literally ni lan me, ni pie. Ce n'est pas juste que la Bible dit que le bon Dieu est spirit. Il n'y a pas de pièces, il n'y a pas de langue, il n'y a pas de chile, il n'y a pas de chile, il n'y a pas de chile, il n'y a pas de bon Dieu, il y a une image. Et il dit que nous avons fait ça, une image de image de bon Dieu. C'est comme Nestlé. Donc pour ça, nous savons que nous sommes importants, nous sommes valés. C'est ça que Peter dit, que nous sommes... 
a royal priesthood, a peculiar pe people, so Nuni Valley. And the duty of humanity, ki du duty no? Pour qui a bon Dieu fait nous, qui duty nous? Yes. Pour glorifier, pour serve, pour sa vivre, pour vivre Bali. Parce que, if, encore, it, it recognize that li, li qui bon Dieu. Yes, li qui met. So, thank you very much, brothers and sisters, as we discuss. May God continue to bless you as you study through the quarter. So God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Joshua, for a very lively lesson study this morning. And I hope those who are viewing, you got something out of it this morning. At this point, our choristers will sing us some songs of praise and worship. And then we will go into our intercessory prayer, which will be done by Sister Romina St. Amy. Okay, let us continue with number 625, 625.
Bible song, let us sing number 211, 211. Oh 
thy name. Oh, loving Father in heaven, this morning we thank you for this day. We pray, oh God, that you will speak to our hearts this morning. In a profound way, we present every young person in this congregation before you. Even those who are viewing online at this very moment, we also present every young person around this globe also. We pray, O oh God, that you will embrace, that you will comfort, that you will reign, that you will direct, that you will shield, that you will protect, that whatever the vows of the enemy will be this morning, that it will not triumph over them. We plead for your divine grace and mercy, O oh God, that all fear, all doubt, Whatever that is not of you will be vanished and that you will become the center of their lives. Oh, holy God, I'll stretch your mighty hands upon every young person that you will break every obstacle in their lives, oh God. Continue to reign in their hearts. We want to thank you for what you have done and yet to do. And we pray, oh God, that... You will continue reigning in their hearts. We thank you for what you have done and yet to do. In your most powerful name I pray. Amen. Have you ever wondered about the meaning of holy? Some examples are God himself, angels, his tabernacle, his law, his people, the Sabbath, and the tithe. What few Christians know, example, are regarded as most holy, the grain and food offering God with them. Whenever we receive income, he says, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits will brim over with new wine. In ancient Israel, through the giving of offerings, God's children worshipped him as giver of all and affirmed him as Lord. They acknowledged him as owner, provider, and sustainer, showing allegiance and willingness to obey, supporting the holy ministry, and being a blessing for many. God set the amount or value of some offerings, and for others, God left it to the worshippers' discretion. Nonetheless, the general principle was always to give in proportion to what one has received and to give the very best to God. According to the Bible, offerings should be returned to God as regularly as the tithe, every time He blesses us with an income or increase. We refer to these regular gifts as promise, because as with the return of the tithe and the keeping of the Sabbath, offerings will only be consistently given to the Lord if there is a purpose in the heart, a firm decision, a promise made in advance, in prayer before Him. Have you already told God how regularly you will return your promise to Him? Have you already decided to always give it after He blesses you with income or increase? Have you already told Him what percentage of income you will regularly return to Him this year as promise in addition to the tithe? Once you tell Him about this percentage, it becomes holy to the Lord. As we worship, 
with your favorite auntie and Fanita. So gather around and listen to what she has. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's um. Today's message too. It says, carry each other's burdens and you will fulfill the law of Christ. Denise and Grange experience, but they share like Denise and Cameron, Paul and Barnabas traveled to a new place where they didn't know anyone. They stopped to rest by the roadside. They looked at the city before them. Most of the people of Lystra don't know anything at all about the God of heaven, Paul sighed. Not for long, Barnabas smiled. The two apostles, they walked on and soon entered the city. The two fist a man who had never been able to walk. Paul may have silently prayed, He believes you, Jesus. You can make him well. Then Paul said to the man, Stand up on your feet. And the man jumped up and walked. One in the crowd shouted, The gods help them in miraculous ways. They shouted, Let's have a celebration. We can offer sacrifices to these gods and give them gifts. Paul and Barnabas moved among the crowd. No, 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 they said. You don't understand. We're people just like you. We have come to tell you the good news about the real God, the true and living God. He is the one who made the sky, the earth, the sea, and everything that is in them. But the people were determined to worship Paul and Barnabas. About that time, some Jews heard about the excitement. They came to see it for themselves. These men wanted to stop the work of Paul and Barnabas. They saw that the townspeople were upset because Paul and Barnabas had stopped their celebration. So it wasn't hard to make them turn against God's men. Very quickly, the same people who had wanted to worship the apostles was dead. The Christian believers of Lystra sadly gathered around Paul. He was bruised and bleeding, but he got up. They helped him back to the city where they could care for him. Come back soon to help you and to encourage you. Paul, how about you? How can you? This podcast is read by Franita Buddy. Our preacher for the morning. We are going to have a poem. But... Good morning, brothers and sisters. Nobody did. Majestic lights display in your majesty, creation spoken in an instance. And man you created with your bare hands between us was no distance. My mind has never... They all tell of, of your awesome wonder which bring wanderers back home again. See, as I climb the highest peaks, search the deepest seas, and try to find, but it is plain, there is nobody greater. Never can I understand or overstand how you create or how much you love man. Wisdom you hold surpassing all understanding. So I stand, I stand and proclaim that there is nobody greater. Parting red seas, opening blind eyes to see, awakening dry bones, while feeding plenty who hunger and thirst after righteousness. But you didn't stop there. Your greatness continued. No more digging for treasures in mines. Keep an open mind and search the scriptures and you will, you, will you will discover divine, divine intervention. There is nobody greater. Though men have tried, tried to hide on the tide of time your greatness, but I know one day it will be revealed when sky splits open and peel back your glory, your greatness, we all will see. You are the promise keeper, the star hanger, nobody greater than you and i will say there is nobody greater than you and nothing will stop me let them talk about me let them spit or say disgusting things all about me but i will proclaim that there is nobody greater there is so much more to say and not enough time to say it but when we look all around 
when we look all around, we see that there truly is nobody greater. So through your greatness, I ask that you use us, Lord, to proclaim your love to this dying world out here and let people know that there is nobody greater than the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Yahweh, I am, Jesus Christ, the only one, the true God, there is nobody greater. The preacher is no other than Elder Tyron James, um, which is from Derry so He is married to Sister Beverly James, and they have two daughters. His topic this morning for us is the free vis in our Christian journey. I hope that you are blessed. Good morning, saints of God. And to those who are listening, by the internet, I must say there's nobody greater than our God. And it's a wonderful privilege to be in God's house this morning. Those of you listening at your house, it's a wonderful blessing. The fact that you are alive and you are well, testify of God's goodness towards you and myself. And there's nobody greater than Jesus. Um, this morning, I'd like you to take your Bibles um, those of you who don't have a Bible, maybe you have it on your phone, wherever we're going to do Psalm 23. It's a psalm that every, I think, mostly everybody or 99.9% .9 of the church knows it, this psalm by without reading it. But we're going to do Psalm 23. I have just only six verses. Okay, we'll read in your hearing, or we can just, let's read it together. We can just recite it. I think we know it well enough just to recite it. The Lord is my, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let's just bow your head with me as I pray. Heavenly Father. This morning, Lord, you've called me to present a message to your people. Father, I stand before you empty. I pray to God that you fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit, that as I speak, that everyone here this morning will understand your words. Those who are listening at the house, at the homes listening, I pray this morning that they too will understand exactly what you want them to understand. And let your blessing be upon each one of us, I pray. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. The free V's in our Christian journey, our Christian walk. Psalm 23 is one of the most popular psalm. Psalm 23 is a psalm that parents have taught the children at a very early age. Psalm 23 from, I can remember growing up from the time I was about five and six years old, my mother was teaching me to recite Psalm 23. And I don't believe it's only my parents. I believe a lot of us learn this psalm from a very tender age. Psalm 23, um, when a friend is, is going through some difficult time, someone is going through something that they, they just don't know what to do, who to turn to, most times we give them Psalm 23 to encourage them. It has been there with us through most difficult times in life. When things don't go as we're supposed to or as we want it to and things are tough and rough. Sometimes we go to Psalm 23 to find comfort. To let us know that God is our shepherd. We go to Psalm 23 many times and Psalm 23 have sat with us. 
in the front benches in church when we lost our loved ones. Let work my pad on moon kipwenu. We lost a loved one. Someone died in the family or a friend. Psalm 23 have sat in the front pew with you, letting you know that he's there with you. Psalm 23 have been the handkerchief. For many persons uh, who've, who've, who's crying through different problems, different situations, locally through different pacasma, and people can hear Psalm 23, halabo, can wiping those tears from your eye. Psalm 23, I must say, is a very special psalm. David wrote this psalm from his life experience. David. As, as, as a man of God, as a shepherd, as one a king, one God has chosen to lead his people. David, as he journeyed through his life, as he journeyed through his, his, his everyday life, through his experience, he wrote Psalm 23 because of the life experience he had. And David is qualified enough to tell us what he was going through and what he went through and how Psalm 23 came about. This psalm is coming from someone who have built his foundation on a solid ground. This psalm is coming from someone, King David, who have built his foundation on a solid ground. This psalm is written by someone who have listened how, who have, have, have who, sorry, have listened or lean or learned how to lean on Jesus. By someone who have learned how to lean on the kings of kings and the Lord of lords. David was a king, but he knew that there was a bigger king than him. And he learned how to lean on Jesus. I like to talk to people who knows how to depend on God. I like to speak to somebody who are someone who have been through the ups and downs and been through the mountain and the valley and who been out there and been in there. I like to speak to people like that who knows what it is to lean on Jesus. I like to talk to people who know how to trust God know the heavens fall. And I'm telling you this morning, I want to let us know it's not getting easy. We are living in a time that you and I have to buckle up because things are not getting easy. And we have to have, we must have a relationship with God as we live in these last days. And David is encouraging us in Psalm 23. And as we go through this psalm, we will discover that God, each one of us will go through a stage or there is three V's or three seasons in our life that we will go through and as we discover and break down the psalm we, you and I will understand what God wants to teach us this morning this psalm has only six verses and these six verses describe three stages that every one of us will go through in our life David went through it himself and as David went through it, uh, uh, you and I, uh, each one of us as a believer, each one of us as a human being, as a child of God, will go through these stages. And then we will discover how it's going to work for us if we put our trust in God and depend upon Six is the seven, the second, sorry. And verse four is the third one. When we look at the first three verses, we see victory. David is experiencing victory in the first three verse in Psalm 23. David began by saying, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. David began by saying, God is my shepherd, I will lack nothing. That's in the new, the new NIV. He says, I will lack nothing. And this morning, I want to let you know, if God is your shepherd, I come by here to tell Kako and those who are listening around the world, if God is your shepherd, you will lack nothing. No matter what is going through in the world, no matter how bad the economy, if God is your shepherd, you will not lack anything. And David said, God is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because the Lord is my shepherd, 
I have everything I need. That's what David is saying. Not everything I want, but everything I need, I have it in Jesus' name. Because my shepherd is not Brother Ramontal or Brother Donald. My shepherd is not Brother Tyrant. My shepherd is Jesus, the Kings of Kings. If your shepherd is Jesus this morning, you will not lack anything. Don't make Chastney your shepherd. Or don't make Philip Shepier your shepherd. This morning, let's make Jesus our shepherd. And he said, if God is our shepherd, you and I will not lack anything. Even if they're firing people, even if they're putting people down, and that those leaders don't know what to do, God, if God is our shepherd, we have to fear nothing. If God is our shepherd, we don't have to fear. We don't have to fear when God is your shepherd. And if it continues, he says, uh, he's saying, he's, he, he is experiencing victory because of the foundation he has built upon. David is experiencing victory because he built himself. He's, built, he's building his life, his journey on a strong foundation. He's building on the foundation who is Jesus the rock. He's not building on any foundation man make. He's building on the foundation that man cannot break. And because he has built on that foundation, he can see the Lord is his shepherd and he shall not want. David is saying, because I surrender to the Lord, everything I need, God has provided. David is saying uh, to someone today, because the Lord is my shepherd, everything I need, he has provided for me. And I can tell you that because God is my shepherd, I don't have everything I want, but by the grace of God, everything I need, he provides. He said, your bread and your water shall be sure. God is going to provide for you. He said, I was young, I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, he sit begging for bread. If God is your shepherd, you don't have to be afraid. Some of us are afraid because Putin is doing some things there and we know the price of everything is going up. Our, our salary remains the same. It's going down. The price of everything is going up. And you're wondering, how are you going to survive? Don't think about it. God say, if he can take care of the sparrows, he can take care of you and I. Because he's our shepherd. Because he's our shepherd. You may have some wants, but your needs will be taken care of. You may have some wants, but I say your needs will be taken care of. If you make the Lord your shepherd, your foundation, he will take care of your needs this morning. David is, is describing the victory God has given him. He has given me, he said, green pastures. David is describing the victory that God has given. And David says, God is my shepherd. I shall not want. And he said, he has given me green pastures pastures. Uh, let me tell you something. Green pastures, uh, it, it is like um, abundance and uh, the opposite of lack. Uh, David is saying, God has given me green pastures. Uh, that is the opposite of lack. Uh, abundance. Uh, and this morning as God's children, no a billionaire or millionaire, but both they are the, can pick and we can take that to the bank. He's saying he has given him green pastures. It is the opposite of shortage. You will not be short of food. You will have water and bread to eat. I'm beg for excellent David. David If God did it for him, he will do it for you this morning. David is saying, because I have built on a strong foundation. My life is not living in want. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I don't have to lower my standard. I've come by here to let you know, as God's children, we don't have to lower our standard to get bread. Because our Father will take care of us. Too many of us, we join different firms and we lower our standard to have a job. You're doing all kinds of things to get bread. But if you stand for Jesus, uh, Jesus will stand for you. He will stand for you and he will provide for you. 
You don't have to lower your standard. You don't have to lower your standard this morning for God to provide for you because your father is in charge of the world. He is the kings of all kings and lords of all lords. He can just speak and it comes to pass. Whatever God wants for you, he can give it to you this morning. He can give it to you. God is the one in control. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I do have to lower my standard. Because how you live is contrary to what you earn. I'm telling you this morning, you might not understand that. How you live, as God is your shepherd, people might not understand how you live. Because you can walk and march like a millionaire, but you don't have a dollar and, and they're, they're jealous of you, my brother. And then you see you, you, you come to church with a different suit and a different shoe every Sabbath. And they're jealous because he has a, a, a minimum wage job and he's not working for a lot. But he always dresses good. That's the blessings of God. Don't, when God is on your side, who can be against you? And that's what God can do for his children. That's what God can do for his children. I, I remember about five, not five, ten plus years ago, I was working not too far from here, and the money wasn't big. It was just little. I had a crusade to do for Kako SDA Church, right on the, um, and I don't have much clothes, brethren. I don't have much suit. And while I was working, the boss came and he told me he's changing his wardrobe, and the man gave me a bag of pants and shit. And close, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. I'm dressing and that fitted me too proper. And I'm coming to church and people are wondering how you, that's the blessings of God. Let me tell you something. You might not be making much, but when you trust God, he have a way of coming through for you in Jesus' name. Like, no, no, let's bum a whole wardrobe, please. He's changing his wardrobe. I know he have money and then he, when he change, he don't change one pants. He Move the entire thing and put an entire new wardrobe. Brother Patrick, you know what I'm talking about. And he just gave me some clothes. And I had clothes for a long time in Jesus' name. You don't have to understand that you live bigger than what you're making when God is on your side. And when God is your shepherd, you live bigger. How you live is contrary to what you earn. You live more than what you earn. You dress better than what you make when God is your shepherd. Things are getting worse. People, people are losing their jobs. But God will make a way for his children. God will make a way for his children. Things are getting bad. All around the world, people are crying. Those with money are crying. Those without are crying. And people are crying. But I want to let you know, when you trust God, he will direct you to the right place. You don't have to cry to anybody. You can cry to him and he will guide you. You can cry to him and he will guide you. God always opens doors. If I have testimony upon testimony, even this week, something happened and God just um, put something in someone in my mind and I call him. Brethren, let me tell you something. We're not serving a God that put short pants. We are serving a God who knows the universe and who is still in control. I have to let you know that God is still on the throne and he is in control. Don't be afraid. He's still in control. You can still trust him. You can still call upon him. And David keeps saying, he leadeth me beside still waters. He leadeth me beside still waters. And David is writing from experience. As a shepherd, the sheep would be afraid to drink from moving water. When David take the sheep to the river, and the, they would not want to drink from the moving waters. It would scare them. And David would go upstream, all the way up where the water is not running so much. And he will lead the sheep beside still water so they can drink peacefully i want to tell you as god's children if you trust jesus he will give you peace in the midst of the storm he will give you peace the whole method of peace is if you don't trouble me i don't trouble you and we have peace but God is saying, even if they trouble you, in the midst of the trouble, I am able to give you peace. And that's what true peace is this morning. 
True peace is not because Ram, Brother Ramon didn't trouble me and he didn't curse me and I didn't curse him back and say, okay, we have peace. And Elder Caleb, and he, he just said, Brother Tyron, how are you? And I say, I'm good, brother. God bless you. And that's just peace. Uh, when he troubles you, or I trouble him, and in the midst of the trouble, in the midst of the situation, he can say, brother, I'm praying for you. That's true peace in Jesus' name. That's what peace is. And God said, I'll lead you beside still water. And David, as after he, he took his ship up and gave them, lead them beside the still water, I want to let us know God wants to give us peace. And he has planned to give each one of us peace because he's our shepherd. David, as a sinful man, he knew the ship would not be at peace drinking in the running water. And he took them upstream where they could drink. He wants to give each one of us peace this morning. And as the world is crying and everything's happening and the bombing and everything, God wants to give his children peace in the midst of this turmoil. In the midst of the, all the things that are happening, the prices are going up and rising inflation, escalating crimes and all kinds of things are happening. God wants to give his children peace this morning. He wants to give you and I peace today. And peace in the midst of your storm. Your peace did not come because of, of, of um, what you did or because um, you were able to just have peace uh, or you had no trouble. Your peace came only because of Jesus this morning. There is a difference between God's peace and the world's peace. I said that the world say, you, 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 you treat me nice, I treat you good and we have peace. But God is saying, even if they treat you bad, even if they treat you the worst way, I want to give you peace in Jesus name and David says he put me in the path of righteousness for the pastor's name's sake he puts me in the path of righteousness for the elder's name's sake and no he puts me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I say praise God this morning. When you and I go astray. God is saying come back here. He puts us in the right path. Not because of the pastor. But because of Jesus. He was the one who woke you up this morning. Had it not been for Christ. Had it not been for Jesus. I wonder where I would have been. And he said he puts you in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. And that's what we have a God who, 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 is, who is loving. And we have a God who is merciful. And Jesus said, I'll put you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So when you look at David, at verse 1, 2, and 3, we see him at a stage of a victorious stage. At verse 1, 2, and 3, David was experiencing victory. A victory in his life. God has been providing for him. God has been blessing him. God has said, I'll put you back in the path of righteousness. When you be in the Christian journey, when David in verse 5 and verse 6, the visionary stage of his life, David, all his experience in his vision. David is having a vision. The Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Every child of God must have a vision. Every woman, every man who is going to get married or every woman must have a vision. Well, no problem. It's one thing not to have something. And another thing, you don't have a vision, you're going to have it. You fair compete be brother salad brother salam I can't do as a someday you might not have it one time but you must have a vision if you live without a vision then you just going through this the motion every young lady must have a vision the same way young man must have a vision you and I must have a vision the Bible says where well, there's no vision the people perish every woman must have a vision every man must have a vision in these two V's in these two V's, David had a vision. And you and I can have a vision also. David, in his vision, saw God. One, he saw God preparing him a special place. In his vision, he also 
saw God providing him with prosperity. In his vision, he gave him a place. David saw God preparing him a special place. I want to tell someone here today, my Bible says, um, my Bible says this morning or this afternoon, sorry, my table is not being prepared by any man. There's David saw God preparing him a place. My table this morning is not being prepared by any man. God, we ask ministers or people to prepare our table for us. And if your table is been prepared by any man, you are in big trouble. If your table is been prepared by any man, you are in trouble. If your table is been prepared by Brother Luke and, 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 and maybe Brother Tyron or Brother Donald and say, Tap moi sans l'aine à dépend, chaque l'aimant taxi mos pour mener bali, et il dit moi il pas après un hordi à comment il faut que your table must be prepared by God. Don't let red or yellow prepare your table for you. If red is the one preparing your table, when yellow comes in, you out. If red is the one preparing, or if it's yellow preparing your table, when red gets in, you out. That is why I refuse to let anybody prepare my table except for Jesus. Jesus is the only one preparing my table before, for me. David says, thou preparest a table before me. God, let God prepare your table for you today. As we live in the end time, we must put our confidence only in Jesus and in no other man. Only in Jesus. Let him prepare your table for you. Don't let anyone prepare your table. God is the one preparing for me. That at my table, there is no need to be afraid of what 2022 holds because God is the one preparing the table. Even if you cannot see the future, even if you don't know what's going to happen, God is the one preparing the table and you need not to be afraid because God is the only one who doesn't make mistakes. He said, I prepare a table in the presence of your enemy. In the presence of your enemy. For example, we are serving a powerful God. I remember about 10, 12 years ago, I was in Anguilla. And then the recession was really tough. A young man introduced me to cleaning cars. I began cleaning the cars. I began doing my little stuff just to keep me surviving because it was bad. I just brought my wife up and I didn't want to go back home. And then a brother told me, Come, let's do something together. We, we, we began working everything together. Things wasn't going right. Things, and then right away, when things wasn't going the way it was supposed to, I said, Lord, I will leave that job because it's not making sense. I will leave that job. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to leave it. Because when all the clients kept calling me. Where are you? We came there and you're not there. I say, well, I had to leave because of circumstances. And they say, well, I'm coming by your house. I say, well, I don't have any equipment. No pressure washer, no vacuum. My brother, do you have a shummy? I said, yes, I have my microfiber cloth and my shummy. Well, I'm coming. They came only when I had a shummy and a microfiber cloth. And then I cleaned cars by my house. The landlord um, was close to the friend, the person that I was working for. Then I spoke to a young man. He told me, Tyrone. I'm going to give you money to pay the rent to start. I couldn't believe it. He came. Hume, brothers and sisters, I began, I found somewhere. I began working. And let me tell you something. In the presence of my in God came through for me. Put me a place. And then when I see them, I will call them. I will treat them good. God don't put you up there to look down on them. Treat them well. Treat them good. And he for me. My table wasn't prepared by myself or by any man. God was the one who prepared it. And when God prepared your table, no man can change that last days. He said, he anoint my head with oil. Not just spill. When the cup, when your cup run over, let it touch the sister. Let it bless somebody else. Let it run over. That you have promised all the days of your life. God has promised that goodness and yes man in town. Without God's goodness and mercy, we are nothing. Even if we have all the money in the world and we doesn't have his mercy and his grace. Goodness and mercy that came through for me. 
when I had nothing to give my children. And I called a brother and he helped me. It was his goodness and mercy that came through for me. When I didn't have clothes to preach the crusade. And he gave me the bag of clothes. It was his goodness and his mercy that came through for me. And the fact that we are here this morning. is living on God's goodness and his mercy. My whole life is all about God's goodness and his mercy. My education. I don't have education. I have nothing brethren. But it's because of God's goodness. You can have all your education. You can have all your degree. You cannot beat God's goodness and his mercy. I'm not bragging. But I'm just talking about his goodness and his mercy. That's reality. God's goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And he has promised that to us. That he said his goodness and his mercy everywhere I went. Had it not been for God's goodness and mercy, I wonder what I would do. It's God's goodness and mercy. That's how you and I will make it in these last days. That's how you and I will make it in this, old, in this wicked time and wicked ages where people have no love anymore. It is God's goodness and his mercy that will follow us all the days of his life. I wish Psalm 23 was just verse 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. I wish it didn't have a verse 4. But it have a verse 4. We saw in verse 1, 2, and 3, David was experiencing victory. We saw in verse 5 and 6 that he was going through visionary experience. But in verse 4, verse 4 talks about David in the valley. The valley experience is not any type of experience. When we go through our victories and everywhere on top of the mountain and life is nice and everything is going well for you and then you have the visionary that would have say to us that god only give us victory and vision but there is a verse 4 that says there is a valley david said i go through the valley still young old educated uneducated male female every one of us have to go through our valley experience no matter how holy you are no matter how well you can preach, no matter how well you can sing or how well you can speak, you will go through your valley experience. Victory teach us how to receive from God. When you're having victories, you can give testimony, pay a light bill. You're going through your victory experience. But valley teach us how to rely on God. When you go through your valley experience, and there's no brother, no sister. Rely on God. And they say they don't have. And then you go down on your knees and say, Lord, I... When you go down and say, Lord, you're the only one that can help me. Your valley experience on him. David said, I was in the valley. And I asked him how, how, I asked David, how did you get free of valley experience? And he told me, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, I'm going to break it down. When you're in the valley, you're in the valley. But don't let the valley to live in you. Don't walk like valley people. When the valley is in you, you come to church and you valley walk. The valley is inside. Don't let the valley stay in you. You come, you don't shave. You don't, you, you, your hair in a Don't smell like valley people. Sorry, I, I hope we get that one. I'm, just, I'm not talking about valley, valley, valley. I'm talking about the valley when you're in your problems. Uh, and the valley when you don't know where to turn uh, or who to turn to. And you're down in the valley. Get up. David, not David, sorry. Um, 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 Isaiah said, um, um, he, he, when in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord also. When King Uzziah died, the people were stressed. Isaiah was thinking, who will take over? Who will be the next leader? Who will take us through? And everybody was feeling down and broken. And Isaiah said, I also saw the Lord. In the midst of your folly, you need to see the Lord. If you keep your eyes on the situation, 
If you keep your eyes on what's happening, you'll only see that. But in the midst of the bad situation, you need to see the Lord sitting high and lifted up. And you need to see him sitting on the throne. And if God is on the throne and I am his son, he's going to come through for me. I don't know when, I don't know how soon, but I know that he's going to come through. He's done it before and he's going to do it again. Don't walk the valley walk. You can be in the valley. It's not a problem being in the valley. Because I, have a, I, I had a house in Valley Avenue. Yes, I've been there. And I, I know valley experience will keep coming since we're on this side of life. I've been in the valley. I've stayed in the valley for, for a long time in the valley. I said I even have a house in Valley Boulevard. I've been in the valley. But when I realize uh, that's not my place, uh, I don't dress like I'm in the valley. I don't walk like I'm in the valley. I put a smile on my face and I walk to church and I sit in the front pew and I sing holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, glory be to God. I sing, I praise him to let the devil know that my God is still in control. So the valley experience is not a bad one. It helps us to rely on God. It helps us, it brings us down on our knees and let us know that we need God. If you only have victory, victory, you forget sometimes that there is a God who is helping. So some valley experience is good to let you know that God is still the one in control. To let you know you're not on an island by yourself. You still need the help of God. But while you're in the valley, don't dress like the valley. Don't walk like the valley. Don't smell like the valley. And that will help you get out faster. From the valley experience. David made it through the valley. Because his feet. Was on a strong foundation. You and I. Who are going through a valley experience. This morning. I see everybody. And I'm, I'm happy that nobody's looking like valley. Nobody's smelling like valley. I didn't see you walk this morning. But so far I'm not seeing you. But easy. Some of us are going through it, and then it's so hard, but we still manage to come to church, and that's a blessing. We still manage to give God the praise and the glory this morning, and that's a blessing. I'm happy that we're able to do that this morning. Because we are testifying and letting the world know that God is still in control, and he's still on the throne. And if God is on the throne, you can bet your life, and if he's still in control, no matter what is happening, no matter what is going through, he's going to come through for you. I don't know how soon. It can be next minute. It can be right now. It can be the valley look. No matter how deep it look, God came through for David. He came through for me also. And I know he has come through for many individuals here. He's going to come through for you also. So as we go through uh, life's journey, we're going to experience victory. We will have visions. And every need to have that. Don't lose sight of it. That's our hope that Jesus, John 14, 1 to 3, say he's going to prepare a place for us. And he's going to come back. He's going to prepare a place for you. And where he is, there we will be. We'll be in his presence. That should be our vision. And we also will go through our valley experience. But through it all, Jesus gonna see us through. How many of us this morning want to say, Lord, I want you to help me as I go through the three stages in my life, in this journey, in this Christian life, or in my walk on earth, as I go through these three stages, I need you to give me the strength. When I go through my, vis my, my, my victories, share with the world. When I go through my visions, I share it with the world. And when I go through my valleys, I let them see that God is still on the throne and he can take us through. If that's your desire, let me see you wave your hands wherever you are. God bless you. God bless you. Those who are listening um, at your house and for online, I want to let you know no matter what you are going through, no matter the situation, maybe you cannot pay your rent. The landlord is about to put you out. I want to let you know that God is still on the throne. He's just a prayer away. Talk to him this morning. He's waiting for you. Let's just bow your head. Close your eyes with me as I pray. 
Heavenly Father, I have presented your message to your people. They've listened, dear Lord. Father, if there's something you wanted me to say and I did not say, I beg for your pardon. I present your people, those who are here, those who are at their homes, wherever they are, I present them before you. I pray to God that you minister to each one of us as we go through our valley experiences, dear Lord. I pray that you give us the strength not to remain and walk like the valley, talk like the valley, but we will talk and walk like people who know Jesus and have a relationship with him. Bless us. Keep us. And when you come the second time, I pray to God that each one of us who are here under the hearing of my voice will be ready to go with you, ready to meet you as Lord and Savior. This is my asking in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Elder Tyrant, for living with us this power-packed message this morning. Indeed, you have served us with a three-course meal. What are the freebies in our Christian journey? Victory, visionary, and the valley. I pray that as you continue to go throughout the day, that you commune with God and you analyze what you're going through. You analyze what is happening around you. And I pray that you continue to trust in God this morning. Thank you. I pray that you continue to seek God as well. Um, we are going to go before the throne of grace with a word of prayer. Oh, merciful Father, we just want to thank you for the opportunity where we have learned more and more about you. I pray that as we go through these different experiences in our Christian journey, that will not rely on ourselves, but will rely on God. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your compassion. Be with each and every one of us. Thank you for just showing us that love, Heavenly Father. Keep us in your name, I pray. Amen. Amen.